Hello and welcome viewers. You're watching a brand new show in depth with your host Kriti Mishra. A platform where we break the most complex issues of the world in just five simple questions and their five simple answers to help you understand how these issues matter to you. Skyscrapers have been reaching for the skies for over 150 years, but occasionally these huge structures are damaged or outlived their original purpose. With Noida Supertech Twin Tower, India witnessed one of the biggest demolitions of any building. The demolition was a controlled implosion that used more than 3,500 kgs of explosives. The 40-storey building that took nearly three years to be built was reduced to a rubble in barely seconds. All the explosives were blasted in a series, making a loud noise. The illegal towers were demolished on the orders of the Supreme Court of India that found the buildings had violated construction norms. So let's analyse today what makes a building fit for demolition. Well, every building has a design life, a lifespan of 80 to 100 years. Beyond that time, most structures face problems and may need to be safely removed so you can reuse the land. Illegal construction means any new construction or in addition to the existing structure that violates the law and is based on corrupt practice. Let me call the Supreme Court in this case. Single plot houses have been converted into multi-storied buildings with authorities looking the other way to such illegalities." Unquote. When it comes to faulty foundations, uneven floors, dam and mould are sure signs that the foundations are compromised. For private individuals, if a residential building is not in a good condition, the decision to demolish it before selling the property may be financially beneficial. So what are the factors considered for demolition? While the four steps in the demolition process are surveying, removal of hazardous materials, preparation of a plan and safety measures. The survey process looks at the material used in the construction, shared utilities and facilities, vehicular and traffic conditions in the vicinity and the impact of noise, dust, vibration and traffic movements on the local community. The health and safety plan considers all the measures to protect the public from falling hoardings while ensuring protected walkways, crash decks and scaffolding protection screens. So what are the different demolition methods? Well, two types of demolition methods are used for buildings and structures, non-explosive and explosive. In the non-explosive method, equipment like sledgehammer, excavators, bulldozers are used. Meanwhile, implosion is the process of demolishing building using explosives, something that we saw in Noida. The basic idea is simple. If you remove the support structure of a building at a certain point, the section of the building above that will fall down or the part of the building below. The columns, the beams, the slabs are fixed with explosives. When these explosives are detonated, the column collapses. When planned and executed correctly, the explosives can direct the collapse precisely over a limited area so that cleanup crews are left with only a pile of rubble. The contractor who demolishes the building is responsible for removing the debris. So what does the Indian law say? Well, under municipal corporation rules that are different for different states, the government can demolish private property if it is an unauthorized construction on government land or buildings that encroach on someone else's property or structures that violate regulations. For instance, Uttar Pradesh authorities carry out demolitions under Section 27 of the UP Urban Planning and Development Act of 1973, while Section 343 of the Delhi Municipal Corporation Act 1957 lays down rules for demolition in the national capital. Remember. On 8 May 2019, the Supreme Court of India ordered five apartments in the Marudu municipality in Kerala to be demolished within one month for violating coastal regulation zone rules. On 11th and 12th of January 2020, these luxury lakeside apartment complexes were raised in seconds. So which are the tallest buildings in the world ever demolished? In addition to the intentional demolitions carried out due to structural damage, land redevelopment or the desire of their own owners. Many others are caused by attacks, wars or natural disasters. With its 47 floors, the 187-meter-high single building held the record for the tallest voluntarily demolished building in the world for half a century until 2021. After a string of owners, the US company Steel bought it and tore it down in 1967 to construct another building. How can we forget the dastardly 9-11 attacks? On the morning of 11 September 2001, four planes hijacked by members of Al-Qaeda were used to attack symbolic buildings in the US. 
Among them was the tallest building ever demolished, according to Guinness Book of World Records. The 110th floor World Trade Center, North Tower, that touched 417 meters. The J.P. Morgan Chase Tower, also known as the Union Carbide Building, or 270 Park Avenue, made history by becoming the tallest building to be voluntarily demolished. Mina Plaza 1, a 168 meter skyscraper in Abu Dhabi, was demolished in 2020 in record time. 18,000 detonators were used to bring down its 144 floors in just 10 seconds. Constructions not abided by laws lead to adverse consequences on governance systems, the environment, people's health, transportation services, and overall citizen well being. I'll leave you with those thoughts as we witnessed the biggest demolition of illegal structure in India. Goodbye for now.